I promise on the Holy Quran that wherever they are, I won't leave them alone. They beat me in the face with their fists. They beat me on the body. My eyes were blindfolded, so I don't know what they beat me with. Anyone who criticizes our leader Ramzan, I'll shoot them from this pistol. I'm here in Germany. We control this place. If I go back to Chechnya today, it's the same as walking into certain death. There are no human rights in Chechnya today. There is no rule of law. In fact, there is no law. The only law which is there is what Ramzan Kadyrov says. His orders are the law. Those who dare question Mr. Kadyrov's order are in a very serious trouble. Doing so publicly is pretty much suicidal. A group of around 150 Chechen refugees gather before Vienna's Imperial Palace. They're demonstrating against the persecution and humiliation of their countrymen in their homeland in the North Caucasus. Among them is 30-year-old former resistance fighter Mansur Sadalayev. Sadalayev fled to Austria in 2012 after receiving threats to his life in Chechnya. His application for asylum has already been rejected twice by Austrian authorities. Sadalayev has no doubt that were he to return to Chechnya, he would be killed. Любой человек, который говорит о ситуации в Чечне, который говорит правду, он уже должен опасаться за свою жизнь. Все молчат поэтому. Даже те, кто находится в Европе, также многие боятся, потому что они боятся не за себя, а боятся за родственников, которых, которые находятся, можно сказать, в заложниках у российских оккупантов. Russian President Vladimir Putin installed Ramzan Kadyrov as head of the Restive Republic in 2007. The now 39-year-old has ruled with an iron fist ever since. Kadyrov wants total control. Russia today is an authoritarian state, but Chechnya under Kadyrov has become this totalitarian enclave in Russia's territory. The Vienna protest was triggered by Kadyrov's public humiliation of civilians critical of his regime. This social worker, Aishat Inayeva, recorded a message on WhatsApp in which she complained about Kadyrov living a life of luxury while ordinary citizens were barely able to make ends meet. Kadyrov responded by ordering her and her husband to a meeting in his palace. Following an excruciating grilling on national television, the clearly terrified Inayeva retracted her words. Another incident involved a young man named Adam Dikayev, who criticized Kadyrov on Instagram. Dikayev was tracked down and had his trousers removed, an act considered a huge insult for Chechens. He was then filmed running on a treadmill, singing a song with the title, My Best Friend is President Putin, and forced to take back his words. Я Адам Дикаев, думая, что мне меня не найдут, я написал в своем инстаграме то, что не нужно было писать. Меня нашли, сняли с меня штаны. Я понял, что я никто. С этих пор Путин мой отец, дед и царь. By using brutal physical methods, pressure, public humiliation, the Chechen authorities try to mold everyone 
into submission. Inayeva and Dikayev survived their public shaming, but this professor from Grozny University paid the ultimate price. Hezhia Izhiev was abducted by law enforcement agents in mid-December 2015. Twelve days later, his beaten body was discovered in a forest. <laughs> Passers-by in central Vienna barely noticed the Christmas Eve protest. But Mansour's interview, broadcast in Chechnya and across Europe by the US-funded Radio Free Europe, spread far and fast. Kadyrov reacted swiftly, threatening collective punishment to relatives of those involved. I have given the order to find out who their brothers and fathers are, which clan and where they are from, who they are. Their relatives in Chechnya must be told to control their relatives in Austria. If they don't do this, then we will make them. Access to Radio Liberty in Chechnya was blocked, and Mansour soon found himself the subject of rumours. Mansour has no family left in Chechnya, but other participants in the Vienna demonstration reported that family members back home received visits from authorities. Undeterred by Kadyrov's threats, Sadulayev and others in Vienna's Chechen diaspora organised a second demonstration in late January. Similar protests were planned for other cities across Europe using social media networks such as WhatsApp and Facebook. Organisers are certain their messages were monitored by Chechen authorities. One day before the demonstrations were due to be held in Europe, a mass rally in support of Kadyrov and Russia was suddenly called in the Chechen capital, Grozny. Grozny Television reported that over one million Chechens spontaneously flocked to the streets, a figure only slightly under the recorded population of the Republic. Speakers at the rally used Cold War-era rhetoric, denouncing critics of Kadyrov and Russian President Vladimir Putin as traitors and enemies of the people. We know our enemies and the of this country. Who he was, where he was, he was not in the place. For every word said in the address of the Czech Republic, Republic President of Russia Vladimir Vladimir Putin and the Czech and Russian people will answer to the law. With the enemies, there must be one relationship with the enemies. Allah Akbar! The following day, the second demonstration went ahead in Vienna. Rallies were also held in Oslo, Helsinki, Berlin, Paris and four other cities. Mansour again spoke out, and again the video cameras were there to record his words. Kadira views himself as the father of the Chechen people, the boss of the Chechen people, and so it irritates him to the point of no return that there are Chechens in other countries, Chechens outside of Russia, whom he cannot control. It makes him extremely angry. 
Chechen authorities reacted quickly and harshly. Magomad Daudov, a former insurgent, now second in command in Chechnya, posted this photo on his Instagram page. It shows Kadyrov with his dog, Tarzan, along with a message which reads, Tarzan's fangs are itching and he especially hates dogs with foreign masters. Supporters of Kadyrov in Europe posted photos of themselves on social media sites with slogans declaring, Kadyrov is a patriot of Russia. And this menacing video message was distributed via WhatsApp throughout the Chechen diaspora. Mansour knows to take Kadyrov's threats seriously. In January 2009, former presidential bodyguard Umar Israilov was shot dead in broad daylight in the Vienna suburb of Floridsdorf. Israilov had recently lodged a lawsuit against his ex-boss at the European Court of Human Rights. Также мы прекрасно знаем, что есть здесь много пророссийских людей из Чечни, которые могут выполнить их приказ. Israelov is only one of a long list of prominent Putin and Kadyrov critics who have met with untimely ends. Among them are journalist Anna Politkovskaya, former FSB agent Alexander Litvinenko, Russian opposition politician Boris Nemtsov and human rights defender Natalia Estemirovna. Now Mansour too has found himself on Kadyrov's radar. Kadyrov's accusations came as no surprise to Sadulayev. Они заметили, что именно наш разговор, наш наше выступление поддержало большинстве молодежь не только те, которые э, за пределами Чечни, но и, и именно те, которые находятся в Чечне, именно в любом человеке, который, которого мог, может поддержать народ, в этом человеке они особенно видят угрозу, конечно. И, а почему поддержали? Только потому, что мы говорили то, что знают все, но никто не говорит. Chechen officials, including Ramzan Kadyrov himself, say loud and clear that their opponents are enemies and are sponsored by the West to destroy Chechnya and Russia, that they need to be quote-unquote dealt with. Since his instatement as president, Ramzan Kadyrov has developed a reputation for not only his extreme ruthlessness, but also for his wild extravagance. He lives in an opulent palace of gold and marble, which he shares with his wife and seven children. He enjoys entertaining Western celebrities, boasts an extensive collection of luxury cars, has a penchant for racing horses, which he keeps in Dubai, and even has his own private zoo. Other hobbies include collecting weapons, posting pictures of himself with baby animals on his Instagram page, and throwing lavish birthday celebrations for the man who built his career on the second invasion of Chechnya, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Today, we 
те самые трудные дни, которые были у нашего народа, и как нас поддержал наш президент Владимир Путин. It's quite understandable why he is saying that, because Putin is the one who backed him. Putin is the one who appointed him to run Chechnya. Uh, all the money comes from Putin. In a sense, Kajirov is no one without Putin. For the relatives of the estimated 300,000 Chechens who lost their lives during the two brutal wars with Russia, it's impossible to forget, let alone forgive, the country which invaded their territory. Mansour was 13 years old in 1999 when the Russian army marched into Chechnya for the second time. I remember how все эти убийства мирных жителей, похищение людей, грабежи, все это я сам видел. В 2000 году потерял отца от рук российских оккупантов. Можно сказать, в общем, и первая война, и вторая война, все детство прошло в этих войнах. When Russia took control of the Republic in mid-2000, Vladimir Putin appointed Ramzan's father, Ahmad, as head of the Chechen administration. Three years later, the one-time supporter of the anti-Russian insurgency became president of a region now firmly controlled by his former enemy. To most Chechens, Kadyrov was the ultimate traitor. Six months later, he was dead assassinated at a parade celebrating Russia's victory in World War II. In 2007, Ramzan inherited his late father's post and with it, his loyalty to Russia. Human rights organizations estimate that since Kadyrov Sr. became president, over 36,000 Chechens have been killed and between six to 7,000 have disappeared. Любой нормальный человек, я не мог оставаться в стороне этого. Все, что мог сделать, я делал для того, чтобы освободить свою землю, свой народ от оккупации. In 2008, Mansour joined a group of resistance fighters, but he was to pay a high price for his opposition to the Russian-backed regime. Российская оккупационная администрация. Меня задержало в 2009 году. Посадили меня на два года в тюрьму. There are reportedly over 27,000 Chechens currently behind bars in Russian prisons. Каждый день пытки, зверства, избиения, унижения, оскорбления, голод, холод. Меня заводили в камеры, в которых сидели больные туберкулезом люди, заключенные. И специально, чтобы заразить меня туберкулезом. Меня и тех остальных чеченцев, которые были со мной. Потом, после освобождения, также приходили, пирали, угрожали. Требовали, чтобы я работал на них. Прямо говорили, что если я не буду сотрудничать, то жить они мне не дадут. Мансур realized he had no choice other than to leave his homeland. В 2012 году я приехал в Австрию. Меня сразу положили в больницу, так как я и был в тяжелом состоянии. И где-то шесть месяцев я пролежал в больнице, после чего еще долгое время лечился. Four years after arriving in Austria, however, Mansour and his family still face an uncertain future. Salima, her husband Murat, and their three children find themselves in a similar situation. Salima's troubles began when her younger brother was arrested and imprisoned on trumped-up charges of terrorism. An eight-year ordeal followed as she and human rights investigators attempted to seek justice. Эти митинги, конечно, мало чем помогали, мы устраивали около правительства их, помогали, конечно, мало. Salima's endeavors to help her brother were in vain, but at least she survived. Все люди, которые помогали в этом деле, Астамирова Наталья Хусеновна, замначальника 
колонии Черлокозова, замначальника в СИЗО в городе Грозно. Все вот эти вот люди, я о них могу сказать, что они были. Их нету, их всех убили. Нету нет, ни одного человека, который помогал нам в этом деле, их просто нету. The family made their final decision to flee to Austria after Murat was abducted and beaten. They are now living in a 15 square meter room in a pension in a village near Vienna. Despite everything the family has been through, their application for asylum in Austria has been rejected. Я рассказал то, что меня вот так вот похитили, то, что меня вот так вот избили. Он мне говорит, а не может быть, что у вас вот так вот в Чечне с оружием ходят. Я говорю, как не может быть, если я оттуда приехал? Нет, короче, вот ты посмотри, говорит, у вас такой, такой чистый регион, все, короче, построили, все, все, все. Сделано, говорит, как это так у вас среди города вот так вот могут быть с оружием ходить? Austrian Interior Ministry spokesman Karl Heinz Grundberg explains how decisions are made. Das eine ist eben diese Frage: Sind diese Angaben im Asylverfahren, die Fluchtgründe, die hier angegeben werden, sind diese Gründe plausibel? Oder gibt es hier eine Erzählung, die eben nicht glaubwürdig ist? Das ist das eine. Das andere ist eben diese Frage. Welche Beurteilung finden wir insgesamt jetzt für das Land an sich? Za poslednje godi oni počim mnogo usili priložili k tomu, štoby pokazat vsemu miru, što od Čečne vojna zakončila, što Čečenci dovoljni rasijskimi okupantami, što Čečenci htjaja žit s Rasiji, každý buď to meeting ili ljubo drugo obraćenje. А ситуация в Чечне это очень им мешает, то есть это разрушает ту картинку, которую они строят. Since the second war ended in 2004, the Chechen capital Grozny has been completely rebuilt. The city now boasts gleaming skyscrapers, an enormous mosque, and renovated streetscapes. In 2012, a delegation from Austria's far-right Freedom Party visited Chechnya as guests of Kadyrov. They returned to report the Republic was now peaceful and refugees could safely return. Representatives of Austria really weren't the only ones who only got to see the bright side of contemporary Chechnya. It looks safe. Also, such visitors, foreign visitors in particular, they only get to hear the official part of the story. The authorities actually make huge efforts to make sure that they don't get to see any critics. They don't get to talk to any independent actors. A group of foreign journalists and human rights activists, however, received a very different kind of welcome on a recent visit to Chechnya. As they entered the Republic in March this year, the minivan they were traveling in was attacked and set on fire. All aboard were badly beaten. One of the journalists was investigating the fates of two Chechen asylum seekers who had recently been deported from Norway. Shortly after arriving back in Chechnya, both had died under mysterious circumstances. While Mansour and Salima have so far failed to receive asylum in Austria, thousands of Kadyrov supporters are living freely and openly in Europe. It's какая-то мина замедленного действия. То есть те люди, которые являются пророссийскими, из-за того, что их сегодня здесь принимают и они здесь спокойно живут, даже здесь приходится чеченцам чувствовать this Chechen imam living in Innsbruck even spoke out recently on Grozny television, reassuring viewers back home that everything in Chechnya was just fine. Chechnya. 
سر شیت سعی وایوس سر پایش داخل دو باکر هر بق دوی است سر حتی می‌آل دوی سرور مدوی بود شیم تقریبا شیت غی دی دو شیت غی ایت دو شیت هر دو سر پایش دو سر سر دو حال سر حدی سر بیان سونت سر شیت آن داخل دی نوش تر از اختر. یسی تام سیو تاک پرکراسنا و کرسیو و خراشو. Спрашивается, почему по сегодняшний день из Чечни тысячами уезжают э, семьи, люди, страны Европы. Если там так хорошо, э, говорят, что даже лучше, чем в Европе, то почему люди оттуда продают все, все дома, э, квартиры, имущество? Последние деньги отдают и уезжают в Европу. Почему? And now Mansour has a personal invitation from Kadyrov to return to Chechnya, delivered courtesy of Grozny Television. Эй, обусал была, о унахвала, о тегвала, цул. Тень лил хам, был тень истан, камер истан, изин адутсам, а ул о тегвал там бие. Oh, <laughs>